What's up? Out here, another beautiful day on the Chesapeake. We got Carm. Hello. We got Joey. Oh boy. Sid Meister. And then boss lady over there. Captain's perch. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting pretty, nice and tall up there. And uh, sailing season has just kind of started with fall coming in. It's uh, September 11th, so the temperatures are starting to change. We got, uh, today it's probably mid 70s or so, and 10 ish knots of wind, maybe 15. And we do have we do have one reef in the sail in the main, just because it was kind of windy coming out. But we're just cruising along at the Navy Air Force game today at 3:30. But apart from that, just enjoying the hanging out weather, and Carmen's enjoying some cereal, loving life. <laughs> <laughs> we were just out here living life. What are your thoughts, Sid? It's a good day. Good day. What are your, th th your thoughts, Laura? My thoughts are that I have the best seat in the house. Yeah. People pay big bucks to have this yeah. seat and this view. <laughs> yeah, so we got to have friends who pay the big bucks. <laughs> if you can't have a boat, have a friend that has a boat. <laughs> yeah. Or a daughter. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> So I was saying it's interesting because there's like three different styles of bridge. You have the suspension portion here, you have like the under trusses over there, and then you have over trusses down there. So it literally is like a like a hodgepodge of like bridge engineering. Yeah. You know? Yeah. People can be taking pictures of us right now. some parachuters drop out of a uh, carrier for the Navy game, Navy Air Force game. Pretty far out there. There's one guy up there. This guy's got a banner. We've got a couple of new larger items in today. So we have, this is our new infrared wall mount heater. So the plan for this wall mount heater is to mount it on this wall here. And that way we will have a heater which we don't really have to worry about either tipping over, or rolling around, something falling on it and covering it, and, you know, smothering it, potentially catching on fire. We'll mount it up here um, in such a way that really there's nothing for nothing or no room for anything to fall on it really no room for anything to like lean up against it or anything like that so we got that we also got a new 4k 
This is actually a computer monitor, but we're going to be using it as a TV. It was the only 4K uh, display I could find that was about like 28 inches, because the smallest TV I could find these days is like, <clears throat> at least for 4K, is like 36 inches or something, which is way too big. So I'm going to get it mounted up here on our old monitor mount, which is where we had the original old 1080p monitor that said had full work, but she had to send it back. Um, but she changed jobs. So this will be a nice addition and just in time for a lot of the Navy football games coming up. We got our fancy new 4K 28 inch monitor mounted up on the bracket. You can see on the back there, just the standard uh, Visa mount. And it has two potential kind of resting points. One's right there where there's minimal strain on the arm and it also can come out this way and sort of sit in this corner area. That way it's kind of more directing out towards the main area. Now, the only potential issue with that is the arm is now fully extended all the time. And that does put a little bit of excess strain on the arm itself. So I think maybe we'll do that when we're using it, when we're watching you know, shows or having people over to watch some games or something. We'll put it over in that corner, but while it's resting, we'll just keep it here. Um, I also have this line on here, and this line will allow us to essentially tie it down, actually up against this wall when um, we're underway. So once this goes flat here, I actually bring this little line around, and now this is in the way right now, but you pull this tight and tie it onto something, and you can see that now the monitor is pretty secure on there and isn't gonna be able to go outwards at all. Now, now that the monitor's up there, of course we would like something to hook it into to view movies and shows and TV, etc. So we do have my little ship computer here, which is a mini forum. I highly recommend this company if you're looking for a small, compact, power-efficient PC, which runs Windows 10. So this little guy has an Intel uh, J4125, I believe, and 8 gigs of RAM, which is more than enough to run most light loads on Windows 10. So you can do some web browsing, you can watch movies, you can you know bring up Netflix, Spotify, so on and so forth, and it's got four USB 3.0 ports on the front, power button, um, it's got dual ethernet on the back, display port, HDMI, 12 volt in, which is very nice if you have a 12 volt battery system. And then on the side, we have a removable uh, micro SD slot for additional storage, as well as a microphone and headphone jack. So the nice thing that I really like about this is that it runs on 12 volt DC. So if I flip this over, you can see it's model, model uh, GK41 if you're interested. And right there, input 12 volt DC, three amps. Now, it's only gonna use three amps when it's under max load, which probably is gonna be that frequent. But now that we have the monitor set up, what I wanna do is run a, a dedicated 12 volt line from the battery system, or actually from the breaker panel, but um, from the battery. That way we can power the ship computer while we're underway, or while we're at anchor. For the time being, I have been powering it off of AC, but would like to get a dedicated, um, dedicated switch for it. So, my plan is to put it on one of these switches here, my clean 12 volt system. Uh, right now we have the router hooked up. Um, and I can't remember if I did mention, but we did get our Xfinity internet set up. So we now have the modem inside. A little bit of a mess because right now we're running the cable through the companion way um, rather than through a, um, a uh, pass through on the boat. But um, I digress. So the plan is to attach on an additional um, 16 gauge wire on here, this one for the ship computer, nice and close proximity to the power switch. And then from there, run an HDMI cable, a uh, relatively long HDMI cable, from uh, this location somewhere. But we have one route, we could go down through this passageway, through here, up through here, out of, there's a hole here, but there is one that is, um, has the uh, plastic kind of guards on the edge down there. Run up here, through here, and then I did check down on, by the uh, water here, underneath this portion, um, there is a basically just a wood uh, floorboard that I can go punch straight through and actually come out into this little 
um, storage area here. So that'll bring us right up underneath the TV or monitor, which is pretty much perfect. So that really minimizes the amount of cable length I'm gonna have to run rather than running it off to the ceiling or you know running it all the way over here up and then all the way over the place. So, so I started the wiring and as you can see I had to drill a new pass through up top there for those two wires going in. So these two wires have now been added to the clean 12 volt system. So on the front I did switch up the names a little bit and what they're connected to. So on the top we have the Wi-Fi router we have the modem down below, and then we have the GPS plotter, or the chart plotter. Um, I would put chart plotter, but it'd be way too, <laughs> way too big to fit on that. Um, and then the uh, fourth one down here is going to be the ship computer. And I'm about to close this up so that I can then focus on routing the power cables up through here, up to the top, and I have settled on using this area for the ship computer as well as the cable modem right there. All right, so it took me a little bit, but we finally got some of the devices wired up on the clean 12 volt system. Um, up here we have the ship computer and there's just a little barrel style plug in the back. And then this will be, this is the cable for the modem. So you can see here, it's all hooked up. Now we just need to get a Cox cable that's long enough so we can run it through and then migrate this down there with the coax passing through the uh, cable channel way it goes through down there. We also have the new heater, the wall mount heater that I just mounted up. Um, I haven't wired it just yet, but I wanted to at least get it mounted that way. It's kind of out of the way for the time being. So um, it's looking pretty level and it's nice because it is for the most part out of the way, um, even when you're sitting kind of in that area. So it's 1500 watts and uh, has a little touchscreen panel on it here. Turn it off and on. Um, my plan is to wire it. You can see the, the plug coming out there. I will wire it. Lots um, of space. Yeah, lots of space. I will wire it probably um, down through uh, into this plug, which is the plug for the HVAC system. So uh, since we're not going to be using the reverse cycle while this is on, um, either one or the other, we'll be able to tie it into that plug down there. As you can see right now, it's still pretty hot out in September. It's 83 in here right now. How do you feel about prepping for winter? How do I feel? I hate it. <laughs> I hate winter. It's cold, dreary, and damp. All the worst attributes. Numbers of the uh, maritime republic. What do you think today, Sid? It's a nice day. Dodge in the crab pots? What? Dodge in the crab pots? Well, I'm trying to make it go straight. Yeah. <laughs> and the, what is it? The tie? Or what is it that pushes up? That makes it right up the current. Yeah. <laughs>